What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about the new RHEL HT1205 Mark II subwoofer and I am extra excited to talk to you about this subwoofer today. Now, am I excited just because it's a RHEL subwoofer and I'm a big old RHEL fanboy? No, I do love RHEL subwoofers, but that's not the reason specifically I'm excited for this one in particular. The reason is, I have owned the original RHEL HT1205 for many years now and I use it regularly. I've recommended it a ton. It's one of those subwoofers that's just dummy proof. It works so well. It's super easy to set up and it blends with an extremely wide variety of speakers. No matter what speakers I've ever had in here for review, the RHEL HT1205 has always blended seamlessly with literally everything. And for that reason, it's been a super easy subwoofer to recommend to tons and tons of people over the years. So when I found out RHEL was making an updated version called the Mark II, I couldn't help, <coughs> excuse me, but be excited for just a myriad of reasons. You know, the last Mark II product that came out was a big win, again, from another brand that I was super familiar with and loved. It was the Bucard S400. You guys know I loved the original ones. I was a longtime user of them, and when Bucard released the Mark II version of the S400, I was super excited, and it was a big winner. It was a great execution and great delivery of what a Mark II version of a product should be, and we're seeing the same thing here with the new HT1205. It's a excellent execution of what, what a Mark II should be all about. And I'm gonna tell you guys about it and why. And um, I did run a community, um, not a poll, but a question. I asked you guys what you wanted to see in this video and you guys gave some feedback. And I'm gonna incorporate that stuff that you guys asked for in this video. So you'll see when I get to that section. So we'll do this review the same way we generally do. I'll throw the main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'll tell you about the standout features that I care about or I think are cool. I'll tell you what the subwoofer sounds like. I'll tell you how it compares to some other subwoofers and then we'll wrap up the video. So. Let's talk about some standout features first and foremost and where this differs from the outgoing or previous version HT1205. So uh, a few things are the same, 12 inch driver, 500 watts RMS, class D, and so on. However, the cabinet has been um, largened, enlarged, made bigger. I don't know how you'd say that. The cabinet's bigger, um, so you got a little bit more airspace inside that's gonna give you deeper extension. Even though the, the extension spec itself is the exact same as the outgoing model, minus six, uh, DB 22 Hertz. I found this unit to dig lower, extend deeper, have better extension, more control and more authority down low as well. But we're getting the listen impression. So let me just pull back on that and tell you about the standout features. So the cabinet's a little bit bigger and the dimensions have changed in a way that I find the subwoofer to be much more visually appealing. Now the outgoing model was more of just a square um, and it looked like a square. I mean, it, most subwoofers are squares, no big deal. This new version is just a little bit wider than its height. So visually in the room, it looks a little bit smaller than it actually is. And I find it quite visually appealing. Whereas, you know, I'll just throw a picture on the screen so you can see them side by side. Anyhow, visually, I think this is beautiful. We still get vinyl on the cabinet, but the vinyl has been upgraded to look a lot nicer. It looks a lot more higher end. And the top plate is uh, finished in a full gloss black paint. The RHEL logo on the top is much smaller than the outgoing model, and the RHEL logo that used to be on the driver is gone. So those of you that have complained over the years that RHEL subwoofers have too much branding, this one has way less. You do get a little logo on each footer, and if that bothers you, I don't know what to tell you, because once this thing's on the floor, and this little ledge here casts that shadow, you're never going to see it. Um, out back, um, we have the Class D amplifier. There's no high level input. And those of you that cry about that, look, unless you've got some kind of old archaic tube amplifier that doesn't have a sub out or pre outs, you don't need the high level guys. Most of the subwoofers that come here for review don't have high level input. It's unnecessary for the most part, unless you're planning to set up your system a very specific way, or if you own RHEL's TX range of subwoofers, those are different. Those are designed to be, you know, set up with high level. But I'm going to tell you guys a little dirty secret. Sometimes when I set up my pair of RHEL T7Xs here, I use low level cables and they still sound fantastic. Anyhow, I digress. Around back, uh, uh, two upgrades compared to the outgoing model. One, the variable... Uh, frequency adjustment and gain control. Before they were infinitely variable, there weren't any defined clicks or adjustments. 
Now they are uh, well defined. There's a little click every time you turn the knob just a little bit, just like the TX range. So that's a huge quality of life improvement in my opinion, because I'm the type of guy when I set up a subwoofer, I like to count the clicks on the gain because I have a lot of different speakers here and I just wanna always make sure I have it set up sounding its best and remembering how many clicks I have it on the gain or on the frequency for each speaker is super helpful. I actually have a list in my phone on the various speakers I use and how many clicks I set the HT1205 Mark II to, um, and it's just super helpful. Also, the RCA inputs and outputs were previously board mount. They are now chassis mount. They look much, much better. This is one of those things that is gonna be from, you know, it's basically coming from the TX range. The Rel TX range always had chassis mounted RCAs. And to see that on the HT range, absolutely love it. Um, the price is just north of 800 bucks and well worth it in my opinion. So what the hell does it sound like? Cause let's be honest, I've told you all these cool things, but if it doesn't sound any good, it doesn't matter. Well, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, it's gonna have really, really clean bass output. It's gonna extend very low. It is a 12 inch subwoofer now. Let's, you know, manage expectations real quick because there's a very small percentage of you guys, you know, maybe 1% or so that I like to call the psychopaths and there's nothing wrong with being a psychopath. But the psychopath when it comes to bass is the type of guy that's got a pair of 18 inch subwoofers and it's still not enough. There are people like that, that's okay. Some people have extreme taste for bass. If you have extreme taste for bass, there is a larger version of this called the Predator 1510. I suggest you get a pair or a four pack of those instead if you're one of those just absolutely insane 1% of people who are trying to play the sine wave on the intro of Edge of Tomorrow like Shane from Spare Change. Yeah, I'm calling you out, bro, you're crazy with that. Anyhow, I digress. Um, I found the bass to have very good note to note distinction, incredibly good start stop behavior, very good transient response, good tone and texture, um, really, really good extension. This is one area where it was quite a step up from the outgoing model. The outgoing model had decent extension, don't get me wrong, but the new HT1205 Mark II just gives you just this like sense and feeling of confidence when it's in those lower octaves. It's like happy in those lower frequencies. It has authority and control. There's also a much larger sense of scale compared to the outgoing model. And this new model can also play tremendously louder. So at the end of the day, it certainly does sound fantastic. One other thing to mention, is the tonal character of the subwoofer is just a touch heavier than the outgoing model. The interesting thing here is usually subwoofers that have a heavier tone tend to crush detail. This bad boy doesn't crush detail at all. It's still very good with handling of delicate passages and nuanced details and things like that. So how does it compare to other subwoofers? Well, in the community post, you guys wanted to know first and foremost how it compared to the outgoing model. You guys wanted to know things like, hey, if I already have one HT1205 version one, can I add a second one and have dual subs, but the second one be this new Mark II model? I've got an answer for that and I tested that because I have the HT1205 Mark I. In fact, I sit on it in every video. If I didn't already say that, in fact, I'm sitting on it right now. Yes, the Mark II plays very well with the old models. So if you already have the original HT1205 Mark I and you've been wanting to go duels for a while and you wanna add this new model for your second subwoofer, absolutely do it. I highly recommend it. They're going to have great synergy together. They're going to sound fantastic together. The only thing to keep in mind is if you're doing this in a theater environment, this new model can play louder. So if you're an extreme home theater enthusiast and you're really going to push your subwoofers to the limit, you may find the limit of the original Mark I before you find the limit of the Mark II. I suggest, hey, just try it and worst case scenario, you sell your Mark I and upgrade to a pair of matching Mark IIs. But yeah, the two played together flawless. He didn't have any problems there. Um, I think I briefly told you guys how the two subwoofers are different. Um, for, for the most part, this one plays louder, extends lower, has more authority down low and a larger sense of scale overall and a slightly heavier tone. Um, that's really the biggest difference. However, the two do play very well together. In that community post, some of you guys also wanted to know how um, this Mark II played with the TX subwoofers. Like if you had a T7X or a T9X, could you pair an HT1205 with it? The answer is absolutely yes. I have a pair of Rel T7Xs here and I actually set up the Rel T7X and the HT1205 Mark II in stereo pairs, an eight inch and a 12 inch, an odd mix. It's not something I generally recommend. However, I was quite surprised to see the two subwoofers played together very, very well. 
This was a big surprise for me, mainly because the T7X has a lighter tone, and usually, when you mix a subwoofer that has a lighter tone with one that has a slightly heavier tone, you end up crushing some detail of the lighter sounding subwoofer. That did not happen here at all. In fact, it was the total opposite. We had great synergy. That extra detail and uh, those better handling of delicate passages that Series TX brings to the table were still there front and center. That extra slam extension and authority that HT is known for were there front and center, and they just blended together really well. My guess here, is that John Hunter, the lead engineer of RHEL when designing the new Mark II series, most likely just took extra care and attention to make sure it was just heavy sounding enough to satisfy the theater enthusiast looking for those concussive theater effects, yet still capable of blending seamlessly with RHEL's own subwoofers, and they knocked it out of the park. Like I said, it blended perfectly with the outgoing model 1205 Mark I, and it blended seamlessly with the RHEL higher model T7X as well. So, um, some other questions you guys asked in that community section was how does it, um, at, at what point would you say don't buy an HT and instead upgrade to a TX? So, this is a bit of an interesting situation. My easiest advice is call RHEL, have a chat with them, tell them about your usage case and let them advise you on which one is best. But if you want my advice, this is what I recommend. First and foremost, the two lines, they're for slightly different things, but they can both do music and they can both do theater. The primary difference here is gonna be like what you spend, right? The HT1205 Mark II is just over 800 bucks. Um, that's a little bit more affordable than a single T7X. The single T7X gives you an eight inch driver and 200 watts, where the 1205 Mark II gives you a 12 inch driver and 500 watts. So if you're putting together entry level home theater, or actually I would consider this more like mid tier and up level home theater, because these are phenomenal subwoofers. But when I say, you know, mid tier, low tier, I'm talking about really your, your total budget for your system, not sound quality. Um, and, and you just wanna make sure you have a lot of output, you're probably gonna to wanna to get the HT1205 Mark II instead. Now, if you're putting together you know, a mixed system, but you're, you're like, hey, I don't listen to theater all that loud, I'm in an apartment, I'm gonna to listen to music maybe 60, 70% of the time, you might prefer something like the T7X instead. You're gonna get just a little bit more nuanced detail, a little bit more bass fidelity, tone and texture and things like that out of TX, um, but you're not gonna have as much extension or output, right, as the HT1205, and that's no surprise there. One's an eight inch and one's a 12, right guys? So, you know, ask in the comments or in the channel's free Discord if you're not sure which one to get, and I'll try to advise you the best I can. Um, but, but the easiest way is really just to ask REL guys. Um, another person asked um, how the sound is different between TX and HT, and I already told you that HT extends lower and plays louder than TX, but the main difference really to me is the series TX has a little bit of richness to its tonal character. It's a little bit warm sounding. It's got good, thick texture. That's very clear, very clean, very articulate. Fantastic note-to-note -note distinction and very, very good handling of delicate passages and nuanced detail. Essentially, bass fidelity on the TX is phenomenally good. It's also very good on the HD1205 Mark II, but not on the level of the TX range. Instead, 1205 Mark II, and I think the HT range Mark IIs in general, are instead gonna give you way more output and way more extension for your dollar. So that's kind of the difference, right? Now, how does it compare to some other subwoofers? You guys asked, how does the HT1205 Mark II compare to something like the Arendelle 1961-1S? So, the two subwoofers are quite different. I consider the Arendelle to be like a full featured subwoofer. It's got an onboard DSP. It's got a screen on the back where you can just, you got tons of fine grained controls. Whereas the 1205 Mark II is more of a purist subwoofer. There's no screen, there's no DSP. There's not tons of options for setup. You have gain, you have frequency, you have a phase switch and that's it. You know what I mean? Super dummy proof, really easy to set up. Um, the sound difference is gonna be like this. Both subwoofers sound fairly clean. The Arendelle 1961-1S is gonna be more on the SPL side of things. It's gonna have a little bit more of a heavier tone. It's still gonna be quick and articulate and good, but the HT1205 Mark II, I find to be more articulate, more clean and clear, better note-to-note -note distinction, and so on. Personally, for my taste, I would rather have the 1205 Mark II over the Arendelle 1961-1S. That's just me. 
Um, some of you guys asked how it compares to the SVS SB2000 Pro. I'll make this one super simple. So remember the Arendelle 1961 1S we just talked about, and I said the 1205 Mark II I felt was better in pretty much every category that describes sound quality. The SVS SB2000 Pro is a lot like the Arendelle 1961 1S. The Arendelle is like a slight step up from the SVS SB2000 Pro. So if I recommend the HT1205 Mark II over the Arendelle 1961 1S, then I will also recommend the HT1205 Mark II over the SVS SB2000 Pro. However, one thing worth mentioning is the SVS SB2000 Pro, while it cannot match RHEL's sound quality, uh, nuanced detail, handling of delicate passages, speed, note-to-note -note distinction, and transient response. It does come with a cell phone app with user-definable profile. So if that's something that's very, very important to you, you may prefer that subwoofer for that one specific reason. Um, I'm trying to think what other subwoofers are 12s that I've reviewed recently that we could talk about here. Um, Kef KF92 is double the price. That doesn't really make sense. Um, there's a Rhythmic F12 SE uh, for US customers because that's not available outside of the country. That is 50% more expensive, but in the uh, YouTube community post, a few of you guys did ask about that one, so let's do that one real quick. So, RHT 1205 Mark II, just a little bit over $800. Rhythmic F12 SE, about $1,200. That is 50% more expensive, and I think that's very important to keep in mind. Um, I like both brands tremendously. The two subwoofers do sound fairly different, though. The Rhythmic F12 SC is gonna be all the way on the side of being an SQ subwoofer, being very light in its tone, very strong ex extension, very good bass fidelity. Any descriptor you wanna use for bass fidelity, the Rhythmic F12 SE is absolutely phenomenal, whether it be speed, transient response, nuanced detail, note-to-note um, uh, -note distinction, handling of delicate passages, and so on, the Rhythmic F12 SE is absolutely fantastic. The RHT 1205 Mark II, on the other hand, has a slightly heavier tone, all those um, descriptors I used to describe bass fidelity and the sound of bass, the HT1205 Mark II is very good at all of them. The Rhythmic F12 SE being 50% more money, which is quite a bit, is gonna be slightly a step up on in just about every area. So, um, oh, also I did use the uh, RHEL uh, HT1205 Mark II and the Rhythmic F12 SE in a stereo pair to see if they had synergy together, and they absolutely did. Both subwoofers are sound quality for subwoofers, both subwoofers have very, very good speed and articulation and they played very well together. So I think that about wraps it up for the comparisons, but the takeaway here at the end of the day is this. The original HT1205 was a fantastic subwoofer and I was very excited to see there was a new version coming, but a little bit fearful. Sometimes I worry companies are gonna mess up the new model of the product that I love so much. But Rel knocked it out of the park. The new 1205 Mark II is worth every penny of its asking price. I believe it's $849. I'll leave a correction on screen if I'm wrong. What I like most about the HT1205 Mark II is gonna be the upgrade over the outgoing model in terms of its aesthetic appeal. The gloss painted uh, top plate gives a sense of separation between this like top last, what would you call this, maybe half inch and rest of the cabinet. And it makes the subwoofer look a little bit shorter. The line green vinyl has been upgraded and it looks much nicer and it's a slightly lighter shade now. It just looks more high end. The driver ditched the rail logo and while I liked that, I think it does look a little bit more regal now, if you will. It just overall looks nicer. The cabinet edges are curved. It's really essentially taking a page out of Series TX. In fact, the smaller 1003 Mark II, which I have here as well, and we'll review that soon. Some of you guys in the community post asked how it compares to the 1205, I'm sorry, the 1003 Mark II. We'll talk about that more when we review the 1003 Mark II, but I'll give you a little bit of a teaser. The 1205 Mark II, where it's different than its little brother 1003, is gonna be sense of scale. The 1205 has a much larger sense of scale than its little brother 1003 and can extend much lower and have more authority and control in those lowest frequencies. The 1003 Mark II is a phenomenal subwoofer. It is, however, much smaller, almost identical in size physically uh, to the T7X, in fact. So, guys, I think this about brings this video to a close. I think I've told you just about everything I've wanted to tell you about the new 1205 Mark II. If you have any questions, this YouTube channel does have a free Discord, and you can ask there or in the YouTube comments. I definitely recommend the subwoofer. I think it sounds fantastic, and I think it's got a sound that's gonna make a lot of people happy because it's got all those sound quality characteristics that I love being a you know an SQ customer, but it's got that slightly heavier tone that most people crave from a subwoofer, that slightly heavier tone 
that lets you know like, hey, the bass is here, but it does it clean, it's articulate, and it's still incredibly fast. So, before I ramble on too much, we're just gonna wrap this video up here, and until next time, guys, later.